continue our discussion on the S1 technology scaling and the variability issues. So you have seen this kind of scaling trend before. And as we discussed before, the S1 scaling has been following the Moore's law very strict, strictly. And uh, you have seen here, this is the S1 cell area. This is 60 S1 cell area in terms of the micrometer square. And uh, the scaling trend is about 25x every two years till recent like 22 or 14 nanometer. And we do see the delay from 14 to 10 nanometer uh, in, the, in, uh, in today's industry. And here is the layout. And uh, uh, you have seen this kind of layout before. And this is under the microscope. And uh, you have seen the 65 nanometer, 45, 32, 22. All of them have this similar layout. So here, those straight lines are the word lines. Sorry, not the word lines, the gate. Uh, area. So, and, and, and you can see here from 65 to 45, actually the shape becomes more rectangular and uh, more smooth. So this is due to the you know, uh, uh, discussions we have before this double patterning. And uh, you get basically can improve the lithography uh, uh, the resolution by using the double patterning or even triple patterning these days. So, here, as you can see here, uh, from 32 to 22 nanometer, the cell size decreased below like 0.1 micrometer square already. So this is pretty <coughs> small. And here, this is another chart showing the scaling trend for the s red cell area. But also in this chart, we plot the two critical dimension. One is the contact gate pitch and the other one is metal one pitch. So as we discussed before, what is really scaling in this contact gate pitch? And uh, uh, basically the contact gate pitch defines one dimension, and the metal one pitch defines the other dimension. So then you know the area is defined by those two sides scaling. So and here we see this scaling trend very well, at least uh, till today. So here I think uh, this is to the right and this is to the left. And this is the 0.1 micrometer square. This is uh, 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 from the 32 to 22 nanometer technology node. So the s cell area dropped below 0.1 micrometer square. And uh, this is a scanning trend for the uh, power supply. Uh, the VDD, the mean value of the VDD. And uh, as we scale the technology node, so it's also possible to scale down the VDD and uh, for low power applications. And uh, you see at 90 nanometers, the minimum VDD is about like one volt. And today, like, uh, today is like 14 nanometer or even below. The minimum VDD can be scaled to like 0.7 volts. So this is minimal VDD. So, so uh, 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 you can also operate at higher VDD uh, for faster operations. But this is a minimal VDD you can achieve, given the noise margin. So this is a scaling trend for the supply voltage. And uh, as we discussed before, uh, the challenge for scaling, like the uh, uh, noise margin, uh, we can get that from the butterfly curve, like this, for the static noise margin. And uh, the challenge is that here we may have the mismatch of those transistors uh, due to the process variation. And uh, if you have mismatch, and you have seen that in your homework as well, so those uh, two square here may not be the same, and the smaller one will be the bottleneck uh, of the <coughs> noise margin. So with the mismatch, we will have more challenges in the scaling. And here we are going to show some of the real experimental data from the industry uh, at different technology nodes to see the variability uh, increases as, when, as, as you do the scaling. 
And here we see a group of curves that are measured from many devices on the same wafer. And uh, here we see a group of curves because each x ray cell is different due to the process variation. And uh, here this is for the read condition. You see the uh, uh, butterfly curve for the read operation. And as you can see here, from 45 to 32 to 22 nanometer, the group of curve get more spread out due to the increased variability. And uh, as a result, you can see the square you can fit into here will get shrinked. That's, that means uh, the noise margin will get smaller. So this is a challenge. And uh, also at the same technology node, as we discussed before, as you shrink the VDD, let's say from 1.1 to let's say 0 0.7, you can see that the shrinking of the noise margin. And uh, here we consider this variability. So you see that it's even more challenging when you consider the variability into this scaling of the supply voltage. So the key challenge for the s design in today's advanced technology nodes is how to overcome the variability because the s cells will have different, uh, for example, noise margin and you have to account for the that's the worst case in your design. So we need to understand the sources of those variability. And uh, here we're going to spend the next a couple of slides discussing the origins of those uh, intrinsic parameter fluctuations in the transistors. What causes this variability? And if you look at the transistor in this schematic, here. Uh, this shows some ideal geometry of the transistor. This is a bulk transistor. And uh, uh, you can have the, let's say, very smooth boundaries between different regions and uh, continuous doping. So here, for example, if you use NMOS, they have p-type doping to the substrate. And you think it's a continuous doping, that means the doping is uniform here. So those are ideal cases for the transistor. This physical picture may be true for a large scale transistor. But when we scale the transistor down to this neck, 30 nanometer, 20 nanometer scale, then this picture is no longer valid. And what we have in the real device is something like this. So we have those non-ideal uh, effects in the real devices. And here we see, for example, the non-edge roughness. Right? When you define the gate, and uh, the boundary may not be smooth, and we have this roughness. And also, the, let's say, the oxide thickness, the gate oxide thickness may not be uniform. So we have this roughness uh, at the interface. And also, we have this so-called random dopant fluctuation effect. That means when you consider the dopant in the substrate under the channel, then because of dimension of this transistor is only maybe 20 nanometer in the W and L, those dimension. So if you count how many dopant you have in that channel area, probably it's only like a hundred or even less than hundred. <coughs> So you cannot treat that, a conti treat that as continuous variable. You have to treat those dopant as individual particles, individual atoms. So then that will cause the variation. We will discuss in the more details of those effects in the following slides. And here, when you look at the atomics, at, at, atomistic view of the MOSFET, this is how you look, look at it for today's scaled technology nodes. So you have those non-ideal, non-uniform, and rough uh, uh, <coughs> surfaces. So, any questions? Um, 
is there any method to say distribute or create a more uniform doping do they or do they just take it as it is as it's random? So there's no way that you can precisely place the dopant into the yeah. channel by the fabrication you use ion implantation, so it's like a random process you inject the items. Especially at this small dimension, you will get, uh, 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 let's say, the variations in terms of the number of dopants and the locations of the dopants. So there's no way to control it. And uh, here, let's summarize the sources for the fluctuation or the variations in the small scale MOSFET. So here we list a random dopant fluctuation and uh, RDF for short and the gate line edge roughness LER and the gate oxide thickness variation. So those three are the primary sources for the uh, variations that your VTH uh, variation <coughs> across devices. And those three are static uh, effect. That means uh, the device uh, VTH for the vibration will be static. Uh, that means it will not change over time. Um, but this will account for the spatial variation. Let's say device A and device B will have different, for example, threshold voltage due to those uh, reasons. And the following two are more like a temporal effect. Temporal effect. So first one is the random telegraph noise, RTN for short. And second one is the negative bias temperature instability or MBTI for short. So those are temporal effect. That means for example, the threshold voltage VTH may change over time, and uh, even for the same device. So those are the sources for the variation. So the variation may have the spatial variation from device to device, we have different parameters, or temporal variation, the same device, but from time to time, you have different parameters. So those are the variations, variabilities of the transistors. And as a circuit designer, you have to consider those variations when you design the circuit for robust oper operations. You have to account for the worst case. <coughs> OK, so let's look at each of those effects uh, one by one very briefly. Uh, but before that, uh, we need to understand why are the <coughs> SRAN cells sensitive to those variations. So of course, any logic, uh, let's say circuits, uh, will be vulnerable to those variations. But especially, S1 cell are very sensitive to those variations. This is because S1 cell, as we know, that we try to use minimal size transistor mm -hmm. for high density. So the smaller the size, the more vulnerable for those transistors. As we discuss later, you will see that the VTH sigma depends on the area of your transistor. And uh, uh, also we have the, like the uh, a small signal, let's say delta V sensing in the s cells. cell. So we are not operating the full logic level from VDD to ground as other logic circuits. Here the s cell cell, we just look at the small signal, like delta V. So those are uh, even more vulnerable for those to those variations. So here are just some simulations uh, 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 looking at the different channel lengths, uh, different L, and then run the Monte Carlo simulations to get the static noise margin. I think this is for read operation as a function of the channel lengths and it's a distribution. And you, as you can see here, as we shrink, then the distribution get more spread out, and also the mean value of the SNM get decreased. So this is a very challenging uh, 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 problem. OK, so let's look at the first uh, effect, random open fluctuation, RDF. And uh, here, this is uh, the problem. As this is some 
uh, atomic simulations uh, by looking at how the, let's say, you inject the dopant into the device. And here, for example, the red one is probably the p-type dopant, uh, like the boron. And then source and drain region, the blue ones, are heavily doped. Those may be like the phosphorus for the n-type. So here, the, in the channel region, the number of dopants mm -hmm. may vary from device to device. And especially when you have a small scale uh, of the device, then the number of dopants will reduce. So here, for example, in this figure, it shows number of dopants in the channel area as a function of the L. So as we scale down to like uh, maybe 20 nanometer scale, you see the number of dopants is less than like 100 for the spark transistor. So that means one device may have 100 dopants, the other device may have 105 dopants. Right. So then you have this kind of uh, fluctuation. And here to the first order, uh, empirically people estimate the sigma of the, let's say, the VTH threshold voltage. VTH sigma depends on those parameters. But most importantly here is, you, as you see here, is the L times W. That is the area of the transistor. Of course, you have some other parameters like the bit capacitance per unit area, cell X. Na is the doping density. WDM is the depletion width of the transistor. But most importantly here, the area is important. As you shrink the area, then the sigma will go up, and uh, this is uh, reflected by this uh, figure as well. So you see here at about 20 nanometer, let's say, this is a, a L, effective L, but actually this technology load is like 32 nanometer. So you see the sigma is above 60 millivolts. So that's a typical variation you will see in the today's uh, transistor. At 50 millivolts, this is one sigma, and you need to consider like three sigma, right? So then you can see this is uh, the variation. So, but let's look at what actually causes this problem. Uh, we need to understand the role of the dopant in the channel. What does the dopant do for your transistor. And uh, here we show two transistor uh, simulation. This is the, for, from the TCAT simulation. Um, but here we show the two transistors uh, electrical potential. And uh, here we see some dots here. Those are the dopants. So those two transistors uh, may have the same number of dopants, but the location of those dopants can also vary from the device to device. And sometimes this location is even more important than the number of dopants. And uh, we need to understand this through the band diagram. And we have discussed this before, I think. If you look at the transistor, right? So this is the barrier model of the transistor along the channel source gate drain. And uh, source gate drain. This is for NMOS. And uh, here, my argument is that the dopant, what does the dopant do is to basically create this, this barrier. Because if you think about the N plus, let's say P, and M, right? So this is for NMOS. So the dopant, you know, it's p-type dopant. What p-type dopant does is to, you know, uh, in, uh, create this, this barrier because it's a pure junction, right? So here. So this is, uh, the p-type dopant is essentially create this barrier for you. And then you can block the current in the off-state, right? So electrons. 
and we discuss this very high is important in determining the current. So if you have dopant here, so basically you create this barrier. If you don't have the dopant there, then it's probably like this. So source street. And if you have if you don't have dopant, this is a, 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 a that means this is there there is no P type. This may be still N type. Because remember the substrate is uh, intrinsic, then if you don't have dopant, then probably here you don't have the barrier. If you this P is missing. So that means if you look at this uh, uh, these two devices, here we have the dopant. So we have the barrier. And here we don't have the dopant, then we don't have the barrier. So that means the current can flow through. Well, in this device, we have the dopant almost uh, along this direction. So most only the current will be blocked off here. So here you have, uh, let's say, VTH smaller <coughs> than, the, than the left one. Because you need the dopant to create this barrier. And if you don't have the dopant in that particular location, then let's say if you think the channel, you can think some very small small channels in parallel, then those channels will be leaky here. For example, here. So any questions here? And this is uh, another example. This is a uh, nice measure data for the threshold voltage versus the on current. And uh, here, the sample A and sample B, those two devices, may have the same on state current, but they have quite different off state, as a threshold voltage. This is because probably sample A, you have this, uh, you don't have the token in this area. So you have this leaky pass. And sample B, you have the dopant everywhere. So you block those leakage pass. So you have higher VTH. So the location of those dopant will matter. Right? You want those dopant to be uniformly across the channel. So you can block all the leakage pass. But due to the randomness, then sometimes you don't have that, then you will have the leakage. That means your threshold voltage will be smaller. So any questions for the random dopant fluctuation? So one, one thing is the number of dopants will vary. Second is the location of the dopant will vary. And the second is this uh, non-edge roughness, LER. So this is uh, the uh, problem in the fabrication. Uh, when you define the pattern from your, let's say, mask to the actual pattern on the device, then there will be this Roughness. Although your mask may be a straight line, but when you print that into your device, then it may become rough uh, due to the lithography. Mostly it's due to the photo resist we used. So here this is, uh, let's say, the surf. So this one is uh, the measurement result of the surface roughness. And this side is, let's say, the top surface of the silicon. And this is a silicon substrate. And here, for example, we want to etch the silicon dioxide. So we have the silicon dioxide here. But what we want to do here is to uh, spin the photoresist and then do the lithography exposure. So this is, will be the photoresist. Photoresist.
And the photon resist, uh, as we discussed, uh, so basically you have this, uh, if we draw this way, silicon dioxide, and then you have your photo resist, and then we have the lens, and then the mask, let's say the light come here, coming here. So this part is exposure. So then when you develop the photoresist, for example, here, for example, you have this trench. But the challenge here is uh, the photoresist is uh, essentially polymer, uh, organic material, and uh, it has molecules. Uh, so the molecule has some size, so you cannot get rid of them. They cannot go to atomic uh, resolution. So molecule, if you have one more molecule here, less than one molecule here, then the, this edge will be rough when you develop the photoresist. It will not be very sharp because the molecule has is, is not that small. So you have this roughness here. And later, when you use this as a mask to edge your underneath pattern, then this roughness will be transferred to the underneath pattern. So later, when you do the edge, then the silicon dioxide will also be rough here. And if you draw, draw this, then the silicon dioxide will be, will be also rough. So basically, the line edge roughness is due to this transfer of the roughness from your photoresist to your underneath pattern. And uh, uh, here, most important thing is that the gate line edge roughness, because when you define the gate, this is source, this is trim, and this is your gate region. And your effective L will vary if you have the roughness as an edge. So the effective L will be different for different device. And this will cause the variation of your threshold voltage and also other like uncurrent uh, variations. And here the sigma of this variation is here does not change with the feature size L. For example, here this is L. If this is L, doesn't matter how long is your channel. Because here, as we discussed, the origin of this roughness is due to the photoresist, uh, the transfer of that roughness. And re that roughness is uh, almost a constant here. It shows three sigma about like uh, five nanometer. So sigma is like uh, one to two nanometer. So no matter what is your L, then the edge is always rough with this one or two nanometer sigma. So this may not be a problem for a long channel device, right? If you have like 100 nanometer uh, L, and you have variations of one or two nanometer in the L, it's like 1%, it doesn't matter too much. But for today's device, you know the L is only like 20 nanometer. And if you have like a two nanometer variation, it's already 10% changing your L. So, so this will cause the variation.